What's going on, Crypto Cousins? It's your Bitcoin baby daddy here with another episode. Today, we're going to be talking about how to long or short any altcoin. Stay tuned. All right, you guys, if you're new here, go ahead, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, because I make these videos once in a blue moon <laughs> when I feel like it. I'm sorry, guys, I'm, I'm be making a lot more videos, but today I want to talk about um, this protocol that I've been using for a while now, and I actually reached out to the developer and I asked him, hey, can I make some sponsored content for you guys, and would you guys pay me to make this video for you guys, because I actually like using your product, and so I reached out to the developer, and he was like, yeah, I'll pay you to like make a video about our product we just launched v2 and xyz and the other thing so i wanted to bring this to you guys because i've actually been using this protocol for a while so this is actually called wild credit and they're on the v2 of their protocol right now so wild credit is a permissionless borrowing and lending protocol with isolated lending pairs um so that's to make it pretty simple for you guys it's a borrowing and lending platform where you can deposit your crypto and borrow against it um other cryptocurrencies um, and you essentially can long and short doing this instead of doing like um, leverage 2x, 3x, 4x on certain platforms. Well, when you're doing it with borrowing and lending protocols, if you get liquidated, it's not as bad as if you were got liquidated on a leverage platform. Because if you get liquid on a leverage platform, they take it all. But when you get liquidated on a borrowing and lending platform, you get liquidated before since you over collateralize your positions or since you over put money in your positions when you get liquidated they only take a percentage of whatever and they give you whatever they take a percentage of whatever and they give you whatever is left Nigga, what the fuck? look look I, i'm getting there stop it don't 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 talk to me don't talk to me lenders are people who supply and they earn interest for supplying isolated lending pairs and so what that means is anytime you deposit one token in like a lending say you can deposit eth usdc or any other token each one of those lending pairs is isolated from themselves so if one messes up another one doesn't like screw up you can borrow you can borrow um there's definitely a minimum of five thousand dollars you have to borrow um they do this because um gas fees get high from time to time and they don't want small positions that are so small that they can't get liquidated because of the gas fees because then that creates bad debt and bad debt is worse than not being able to liquidate someone trust me i've seen it happen on some of these protocols so before we get into the protocol i want to talk about the highlights of what v2 has brought over and there's actually a new update that also came out and i want to talk about as well just some highlights um of course you see this is back from december 21st so v2 has only been around maybe like two months what they do is they use v uniswap v3 lp positions as collateral for borrowing which is actually pretty cool because i don't see a lot of places doing that so they've got better gas efficiency because you know eth gas prices are stupid also when it comes to gas fees just a little alpha for you guys this was back on 923 the lead dev was talking about how arch arbitrum will be the first consideration yes and it will already have uniswap v3 available so if there's any scaling solutions that they're going to focus on it's definitely going to be arbitrum first faster simpler ui which i really do like they've got protocol owned liquidity as well so the protocol actually owns its own liquidity instead of having like um uniswap on their liquidity or anything like that just getting into the protocol itself so we've got my positions right now i don't have any positions on this wallet but we can go ahead here to the supply side it's really it's like i said it's pretty simple like how this things works so you can supply any of these tokens as of right now there will be more tokens added as time goes on but there's a caveat to how tokens get added because you actually have to vote on new tokens getting added so if you had a very strong like crypto community you can get your community to come say hey we need to supply our liquidity here to this protocol and it can get added to this protocol as long as it's on eth of course so you can see here on the supply side you can earn like all these different apys like you know four percent six percent all that good stuff and i know people are like man those them, them apys is low man that's just the supply apy you know you know you don't get much to supply tokens nowadays but here on the borrow side you can see here that it would cost you 11%, you know, 5% here to borrow, link 16% to borrow. However, the reward APY, which, you know, covers for the borrow APY is, you know, 83%, 400%, 500%, all that good stuff. Because the protocol has protocol owned liquidity now, they can provide these very high APYs. And these very high APYs are paid out in the wild token itself. But you can see here on the reward the wild rewards, wild rewards are accrued to borrowers based on the following allocations. If you're in one of these lending pairs, 
and you're and you're borrowing one of these assets you can see here that this is the total apy and i know you're probably questioning like why does eth and usdc get the most allocations while certain tokens get the least allocations and if you go back to here you can see how like all these percentage like those allocations correlate to these percentages well the reason for that being is you actually have to vote so this is where the wild token itself comes into play um if you have the wild token you're earning the wild token you're so actually supposed to participate in the voting and to see like which pools or which pairs are supposed to like get the most tokens now these allocations i have to look up how often that they're updated but for the most part I, they, they've had like you know two or three core incentive all allocations rounds as of right now but you know developers have been really focused on making sure that v2 has been working properly and whatnot but pretty much that explains these apys right here now i know what you guys may be thinking why would you buy the governance token um well the point is you're actually supposed to earn the governance token but why wouldn't i just sell the governance token immediately after earning the apy you know what i'm saying well actually this is the reason why you wouldn't do it so with the new v2 they actually upgraded to v wild and so if you guys don't know what v wild is it's essentially just the wild is the wild is the staked version of the wild token of the wild governance token and what you can do is you can stake these tokens for a certain amount of days so if i had like 5,000 tokens right i could choose here to lock it up for like 60 days a thousand for 60 days whatever but as you can see as i move the amount of days that i'm locking it the new apy is going up and up and up and it can tell you all these different things about like how many days you have my current apr which is nothing because i'm not staking any on this wallet right now but you can see here the average time lock is 2.8 years so so people are actually thinking this protocol has some time like people aren't like just trying to dump this token or giving up on the protocol they're actually locking up their tokens because they want this sweet apy they want this nice sweet apy on these tokens and this is a good mechanism to keep people from selling the token for pre, you know price appreciation and whatnot but you know once you lock your tokens you can't unlock them before the time period that's just not going to happen but you can claim your rewards during the time period that like the apy you earn on these rewards you can claim those but you can't claim um your initial lock tokens that's just something that you, you you have to understand as well but that's what keeps people from selling the token and it's also if you have this v token you can use it in governance as well so you, you don't have to worry about anything like that so i really like this team and this developer because they really try to focus on letting people know how to use the protocol the right way and to you know stay safe and use it so say that you think crv is going to go down while ETH remains to grow in value you deposit eth into the eth crv pool and then borrow the crv and then what you do is you immediately sell that crv for more eth and then you take that eth and you deposit it back into the eth crv pool to increase your safety ratio now you're long eth and short crv after the price of crv goes down what you do is you buy back at a lower rate and then repay your debt the difference between the initial sale of your CRV and the repurchase price is your profit. You may also repeat this process multiple times to increase your leverage. Another way is what you can do is you can buy one asset while retaining the exposure to another. Say that you want to buy Wi-Fi, but you don't want to sell ETH, right? What you can do is you can deposit ETH into the ETH DAI pool, borrow DAI, sell the DAI for Wi-Fi. Now you got exposure to ETH and Wi-Fi while you're not having to sell your initial ETH. The developer wants to make sure that people understand how to use the protocol in many different ways. And like I said, you can supply these tokens, earn this APY, and then you can borrow, which is you would pay these APYs, but then get earned reward in these APY to cover for the borrowing APY, right? And then once you do that, your tokens that you earn, you can stake them, lock them, earn protocol fees, even more APY, and also vote on the next tokens that are going to be added to the protocol. Also vote on what's the APY that you want for each one of these lending pairs.
Now, the last thing I wanted to show you guys was Dune Analytics because, you know, I, I be in Dune Analytics all the time. I also want to thank this dude, um, Howard. I can't say your last name because I don't want to be disrespectful. Dune Analytics, what it does is it, you know, reads the blockchain and then it just tells you exactly what's everything's happening, but in nice little graphs format. So you can see um, the USD supplied outstanding, wild credit borrowed, uh, USD borrowed outstanding. Of course, as time goes on, this is currently increasing. The total number of suppliers, the total number of borrowers. Um, you can see here like the total, um, the supplied TVL by token. So you can see like what is the protocol, like what are the tokens in the protocol actually made out of. And as time goes on, you can see it's wild. Then you had Dai, Rai. Then you had FXS and so on and so on. Geom just got added. The next, you know, Maker got added. Link got added um rap bitcoin got added so you can see as over time more and more tokens are being added this protocol is actually growing i'll leave links to all this information below but you can also see that the tvl borrow as well so what are mostly people borrowing right now people are mostly borrowing rye and die you know rise a stable coin and dies a stable coin so people are mostly borrowing rye die we um of course wrap wrapped eth and usdc of course it was just usdc and eth at first but now you're starting to see it's really getting diversified and the protocol is growing slowly but surely you can also see like all the uniswap um v3 positions so thank you hard for putting out this information because this does help me see how the protocol is growing what are things happening like what are, like if the new incentives are actually making the protocol grow or not or if the protocol is making money or not all that good stuff so guys i wanted to make sure that i brought you this protocol like i said i've personally been using it for those situations whether the long or short but if you like my review of the wild credit protocol please leave it in the comments let the developer know what you guys think of the protocol all that good stuff leave it in the comments I also left links all the links to everything that i've talked about in the description so if you guys want that go ahead get it in the description other than that you're going to be seeing a lot more of me i promise check me out next time take it easy peace yeah